Hey everyone, how's it going? To Today, we're going to be playing some Sylvanas, and we're going to be talking about the game. I'm focusing on the game, but I, I mostly just got this, wanted to get this video out because I just, I watched the Bob Ross documentary the other day. Uh, if you guys don't know, there's a new Bob Ross documentary on Netflix, and it's a little bit uh, dark. And Bob Ross is like one of the people that I look up to, you know, the most. And... If you guys plan on watching documentary, then maybe come back to the video after. But uh, I just want to talk about it a little bit and what it was about. And also, we're going to start uh, mannequins into demonic. And I'm probably going to go sprint because of her slows. But anyways, with, with the video or with the documentary, a lot of what it was talking about was, you know, um, that Bob Ross was the man that everybody thought he was. He'd made some mistakes and... Um, but for the most part, everyone that, you know, was close to him was, you know, could interview and say that he was the person that everyone thought he was and wanted him to, uh, you know, want to spread happiness in the world. Um, but what ended up happening was he ended up entering business with these two people, Annette Kowalski and Walt Kowalski, who they didn't really care about what Bob Ross wanted in terms of, like... Just of like spreading happiness and just teaching people how to paint. They mostly just wanted the money, right? They all they cared about was selling the paints and all that stuff. And there's, I mean, you know, the business is a business, and that's how it started off. But what the documentary goes into is the things that a lot of people don't talk about, and uh, a lot of people actually declined to interview because they were afraid of being sued by the Kowalskis. And well, big part of that is that. They were really, really greedy when it came to the Bob Ross name, right? And even to go as far as, like, things would get worse and worse. Like, uh, uh, in the documentary, it has Bob Ross's son, Steve. And they talk about how Steve, um, how, uh, you know, just, just certain things about it. And just very strangely, also getting this buff is so nice. Um, but, but what ended up happening was that, uh, I'm sorry, I keep losing my train of thought because it's blown up, but, uh, that as time went on, they would do more and more things that were kind of not really what Bob wanted. And I guess when they set it up, they had a vote system in place so that, um, Bob and his wife, they would have a vote for Put what was to do right? with, you know, Bob Ross Incorporated or the business or whatever, right? And um, and then both of the Kowalskis, Annette Kowalski and Walt Kowalski, they would have a vote themselves. Also, we can get a kill here. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and just uh, basically what ended up happening is they took complete advantage of that because eventually... For those that don't know, uh, Bob Ross ended up getting super... Or not, uh, um, Bob Ross did, but first his wife got super sick and ended up passing away. And what ended up happening was when she passed away, I guess Bob just ended up being outvoted on everything with the business, you know? Like, and it, it, that thing just got worse and worse. Um, and I'm skipping over a lot because documentary is like an hour and a half. But... The main things I want to focus on are, like, just, just the course. things, the way they treated him, man. I, I was, like, really worked up about it and really upset about it. Like, uh, when Bob Ross himself started getting really sick, uh, he was still doing, like, three episodes a day of the Joy of Painting and stuff like that. And um, he always wanted to do a children's show, and he started doing a children's show. And at that point, you know, he was wearing a wig because, you know, because he, he was... He was, he was just super, super sick, and but he was just happy to be doing it. And the Kowalskis would be telling him, like, you shouldn't be doing this because you look so sick that it's going to affect profits and stuff like that, you know? And it's just so awful. And it eventually got to the point where even when Bob Ross was, like, on his deathbed, the Kowalskis were trying to convince him to... So basically give over his name to them, right? Because they can only use Bob Ross Incorporated with uh, Bob Ross's legal guidance or whatever. And what ended up happening 
was uh, Bob Ross did not do that, but they tried to trick his son into getting him to convince his dad to trick to give it over as well. And uh, I promise you this is going somewhere. But um, so they try to get Steve Ross to convince Bob Ross to sign his name over as a memorial so that they could make a nice memorial for him. But Steve looked into it and realized it was not a memorial. It was the rights to his name for the company or whatever, which is so, oh man, very upsetting. But that we're not even close to the really upsetting part. Let me see if I can get a kill here also. Um, the really upsetting part was that after when he did eventually pass, and I mean, he was very sick, right? Ah, oh, man. Let's get some defense. When he did pass, the Kowalskis, they tried to keep it super hush-hush, and uh, they wanted it to seem like Bob Ross did not die. And in fact, even his, his the, what was happening with how sick he was, was already pretty hush-hush. But that was more of Bob Ross's choice. But uh, yeah, when he passed, um they ended up keeping it trying to keep it super hush hush to the point where only 30 people were able to go to uh his funeral and i mean this is a man who is loved worldwide it's not like it was trying to keep hush hush for the family it was trying to keep hush hush for the business bob ross incorporated and um while he did not sign his name over what um they had to find proof of like, okay, well, who has rights to the name, right? And Steve did a lot of digging up, and eventually uh, he found out that there were documents that signed the name over to Steve Ross and Steve's uncle. And, oh man, what ended up happening was, I guess, Steve's uncle ended up going into a settlement with the Kowalskis for Bob Ross's name. And... Just a lot of what they're doing, a lot of what they've done, none of it goes towards Bob Ross's family. It goes towards the Kowalskis, who have made millions off of uh, what he does and not in the way that Bob Ross wanted, right? You know? Um, I'm skipping over a ton because, again, the documentary is an hour and a half long. But it's, it's basically that... You know, let, let's say the Bob Ross Twitch channel, anything Bob Ross, even this Bob Ross skin, the money goes to Bob Ross Incorporated, right? When you purchased it. And that means, no, it's not actually going to Bob Ross's family like we all thought. It's going to the Kowalskis. And there's just so many sick things they did. Uh, one thing they were caught with as well is after Bob Ross died, they were caught with forging... Uh, Bob Ross's signature onto paintings. And apparently the only person in the world who can properly tell a Bob Ross painting because she was so close with Bob was Annette Kowalski. <laughs> and turns out they're forging uh, signatures. If she's the only one who can properly tell a Bob Ross painting is a Bob Ross painting, uh, that's pretty pro damn problematic. Hell, I remember a few years ago watching a short little YouTube video about it. And um, Annette Kowalski was the nice old lady that was talking about Bob and like, like they were, you know, the best of friends. I thought it was adorable. And it turns out that no, they, she's her, she's her, uh, their family so much. And what Steve tried to do, Steve tried to be like, okay, well, I'm going to open my own line of paints called Steve Ross. And he couldn't do that. They sued him and he lost the lawsuit because he doesn't have the rights to the Ross name, which is <laughs> ridiculous. It's his own name and he can't legally sell his own paints. Oh man, it just gets me so upset. But yeah, highly recommend watching the documentary. Um, I'm, I know I'm not gonna be buying anything from Bob Ross and Inc. I already bought the skin. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, but yeah, it's, I remember when this skin came out, I think they were saying the money goes to his family, but I don't think that's the case. There's no way high res could have known. All this information is coming out only recently, like all of it. Um, you know, like, you know, they start out the documentary with Steve talking about how there's probably going to be a lot of backslash from the film. And I think Netflix, I heard Netflix is going to be sued by Bob Ross Incorporated. 
Um, yeah, no, it's just, just, it's just, in, it's just crazy how all this happened and just how much they exploited Bob Ross and his family. And I mean, I didn't even talk about all of it. You know what I mean? Oh goodness, we better run. Ah. Uh, I try to heal there. Don't worry, my sap. But yeah, I just ha I had to get again. this tangent out there so that other people could know. I again I recommend watching documentary for the full uh information of it. I mean that you know, uh like for me, like I was saying that Bob Ross is pretty much my hero, you know, there's a lot of days I was having a really rough day and I would just tune in to Bob Ross on Netflix or whatever and just um it make me feel so much better. Like I, I wanted to do what he was doing, you know what I mean? In terms of like making people feel better and making like, them feel like they can handle anything. And uh, yeah, just what a, what a, what a great man. And uh, it's just hard to believe that the way he was taken advantage of. And yeah, again, there's a lot of stuff I'm skipping over. Uh, there's a lot more stuff the Kowalskis did that I probably can't remember in this current moment and probably can't even get into because again, it's an hour and a half, but, uh, yeah, I, I had to get it out on YouTube, let you guys know in case any of you buy Bob Ross Incorporated stuff that, no, it is in fact not going to his family, um, like they make you want to think, you know? This game's going okay. Unfortunately, it is a bad matchup for Sylvanas. Uh, the longer the game goes. So, I'm just trying to get my rings online. And then maybe get some more power. Yeah, you can see how tanky she is. She's double defense. This isn't going to do anything, but maybe I can body block. No. Ah, uh, dude, I maybe could have gotten a kill there. But yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts on it if you happen to watch the documentary. Um, I'm, I mostly wanted to say this just to just because he meant so much to me and it's like I just want to get the word out there that uh, about you know what happened man poor Steve man poor Steve has went through so much uh, with like him trying to with the lawsuit and stuff and he's just not working and he's he's amazing too he's amazing too Steve is is absolutely wonderful um, he was on some episodes of the Joy Painting and stuff. Just All right. So she has double defense, toxic blade. Uh, and if she gets triple defense, that might things, make things complicated, but I think we'll be okay. I think I'm going to go into a Spirit of Mages. Okay. We're fine. We just need wards. I'm going to buy some wards so that she can't take Demon King. She also has a diamond border, which makes this difficult anyways. She's taking the minis. Okay, let's get some wards online. Friend, what would you like? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Looks like she's got double anti-heal as well. I'm actually not healing that much, so that doesn't bother me very much. Anyways. We got lots of yellow numbers. Yellow numbers are how we win. Whoops. Those block sacks are super strong. Probably use my ages here. Ah. 
want, but do not step on my If I ulted there with the thorns, I would have died anyways, so I was kind of waiting on my ult, but maybe I should have used it when she I should have used it when she ulted immediately. That's okay. Yeah, I'll get a I think I'm going to get a Fafter game tomorrow. I mostly just want to get some Oz to talk about the documentary because I just had so many thoughts on my mind about it. And again, it's like, it sucks because it's like this skin, uh, you know, made it seem like it was going to his family. But obviously, no one could know. And then it's like the Bob Ross Twitch channel, you know? Uh, if you look into it, that's Bob Ross Incorporated. Anything that's Bob Ross Incorporated isn't actually... Uh, you know, their family and stuff. And it's one of those things where, like, morals do not overlap with laws at all. Because legally, yeah, they did nothing wrong. But you hear everything they did, it's like, how? How? I can't imagine, man. I can't imagine everything they did just for money. When they're already rich, you know? It's not like they were making hard decisions struggling to make it or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm probably gonna have to sprint here. Yeah, I hate having to run away so much, but uh, the double defense, you know, is problematic. Double defense is big problematic. I don't know if she's actually going for XP camp or what. Or just Demon King. This game's going pretty good so far. I mean, it's like, yes, I'm losing, but I'm not losing that much. It's going it's going pretty good, I would say. Oh, dang. If I had went over faster, it would have been fine. Okay, we want to delay her back as much as possible here. Uh, well, if she just runs straight to Phoenix, I can't really delay it, so never mind. But I can at least take, uh, Tower. And then get Spear of the Mages online. We are gonna lose our Phoenix. We lose our Phoenix no matter what. Uh, but by getting Tower, we get a little bit more gold. And I need to run. Again, lose Phoenix. Not much we can do. Uh, she did go, uh, Kinsize. I don't have that much, like, I have a lot of health because of my Guardian, but I don't have a lot of health from items. Kinsai's doing a percent of health, percent health damage. Um, so I don't think it's too good against me, but eh, against any guardian is pretty decent. Uh, we're going to get that. Again, we lose Phoenix anyway. Either way, I think, I'm think i thinking about going a Rod of 2D just to make us hit really hard with our scaling, our magical power. Because again, Sylvanas alt scales harder than Poseidon ult. It's insane how much damage it can do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that seems about right. I don't think I need Aegis. No. Oh, man. If I had hit that, that would have been so good. That's what I needed. Oh, man. I think we'll get a pull eventually. We'll get a pull whether it's in Fountain or not, but a pull that will allow us to get a kill. The double defense is just so good. Luckily, when we upgrade our mannequins, that will give us more physical damage, uh, which he doesn't have defense for. So, looking forward to that. In fact, I should save my gold for it. Now, she's pretty low, so if she wants to fight, I'm down. Plus, my ultimate's up soon. So, either way... I wonder if I can get a little bit of Phoenix here. This is dangerous, but... No. No, I gotta back up. I gotta back up. <laughs> we did, like, a few autos to Phoenix. Ah, this is tough. I do think Sylvanas is such a good spot because of the, the mannequins and stuff. Like, this matchup, again, against Diamond Bologna, we're kind of holding our own when I don't think we should be. Oh, I'm not level 20 yet. Oh, no. We need to be level 20. She upgraded her mannequins. 
Yeah, we have to play super far back. Uh, thankfully, she doesn't have Frostbound. I have a sprint either way, even if she got it. Try to get it. Okay, that's a lot of good damage. Obviously, she gets a lot of damage on my Titan, too, which isn't ideal. If she keeps doing that, uh, we're going to have problems. If she keeps doing that, like just diving for Titan and then backing up, we'll have problems. We can force a kill. Oh, I'm still not level 20. Come on. I need mannequins more than Rod of 2D right now. Um, she might backdoor me as well. My, my Phoenix is coming up. I'm sure she's taking Demon King right now. Um... But yeah. Let's take this blue buff. People might look at you a bit funny, but it's okay. Yep, there's the Demon King. Put this little guy right now we just need to try to defend this. Uh, Phoenix will go down, but if we can get a kill, that would be great. Okay, she's going after me. Nah. <laughs> Saving my ult for when it gets crucial. Hopefully that's a kill. And that's why I was saving my all. Okay, our Titan is so damn low, though. Our Titan is so damn low. Oh, man. What do we do? What do we do? Ah, just just got to push. Just got to push and hope, man. I mean, I will recall and get my Rod of Tehuti and try to make a good defend. Uh, chances are, like, if she goes straight for my, my Titan, I might be able to get the... Uh, the kill. If I play it appropriately. Oh, I still need 100 gold for power potion. My idea is if she goes straight for Titan, I can try to get a lot of damage on her way to Titan. And then just alter and like pull her out of Titan to heal it and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. Okay, let's get power potion. I just want to make sure she wasn't gunning straight for this. We do have wards. The advantage wards. Might even get one more. Let's grab some. Okay, here we go. Again, that Phoenix is not coming up. Okay, looks like she is going for the back door. Okay, let's get her into Titan. Oh, I was going to try to pull her out of Titan, but I can't. But I can't. Oh, man, GG's. Yeah, my goal was to try to pull her out of Titan, but to heal it. But the range wasn't quite there. I had to go in for the all. Yeah. Oh, well, GG's. Mostly this game, again, I'll, I'm happy to do more Savant's games where I focus more on the game. But I just had to get my thoughts out about the Bob Ross documentary and let more people know about what happened with it. Um, but, yeah, GG's. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to try to get a game soon. And, yeah, appreciate that. Bye, everybody.